thank you to the Ellen for the opportunity to be on this beautiful stage. It's magnificent. We're lucky to have it. Um, okay, Steve, I'm ready. I sometimes feel like Alice in Wonderland, squeezing through the rabbit hole when trying to get into a public restroom. Have you ever used the handicap stall in a public bathroom? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. It's okay. It's okay. It's the only one I fit into, though. I need it. Tonight, I'm here to make a case for the importance of universal or inclusive design. Universal meaning accessibility for all. Recently, I was chatting with a friend. She said she always uses the handicap stall in airport bathrooms. Why not? You don't want anyone to tamper with your luggage now. Well, there's only so many of those big stalls, so I wait while you pee, you change your clothes, who knows what else you're doing in there. Those big stalls are really necessary, though, for someone that sits in this seat. I get that everyone else likes them, so why not make them all that big? <laughs> That's a simple example, right? Universal design allows for anyone to get into any building or recreation area. Seven years ago, you may have seen me running errands or commuting to work on my cool red bicycle or mountain biking, cross-country skiing or climbing when I wasn't teaching Pilates. I was active and savored not getting into the car to do life. My story begins climbing Mount Cowan, the highest peak in the Paradise Valley. We had a successful climb and started the descent down the hiker's trail. I lowered myself down a ledge after pounding on the rock to test and be sure it was solid. It was solid, but the soil around that rock was not. The rock released when I put pressure where pressure was likely never put. I was tossed onto some sharp rocks that immediately broke my back and severed my spinal cord, and then I ragdolled down the mountain another 35 feet before my friend Joe stopped me. I watched the two experienced mountaineers I was with exchange glances, and Leslie whispered to Joe, should I call for a helicopter? She ran 10 miles to self-service. Search and rescue helicopter realized it would be a more complicated rescue than they planned on. I wasn't going anywhere to the next morning, so I spent a long night on Mount Cowan with no pay meds. I can still see that full moonlight reflecting on a rock face in front of me. I had a feeling I best savor this light, the smell of rocks and moonlit alpine sky, knowing deep inside I would not likely be in a place like this again. <clears throat> Life changed for me, and I was short roped off of the mountain into a staging area near the trailhead to, to Billings ICU and to Denver for two and a half months of rehab. The biggest shock for me was coming home to face my life myself and to learn to live in a wheelchair. I realized I had a lot more to learn. Acceptance is the hardest, and learning to live in a place where people in wheelchairs are a minority or part of it. Cracks in the sidewalk, narrow doorways, and high steps or thresholds are obstacles I never noticed. When the surgeon came into my ICU room to tell me he was going to fuse eight vertebrae from my neck to the bottom of my ribs, I said, no way, you can't do that, I teach Pilates. I still teach Pilates with better cues and results. I found I was still able to lead an active life. <clears throat> I got a hand cycle. This opened up my world and brought me back to being the active being I craved to be. I need to be outside, feel the elements on my skin, and get that aerobic fix. Moving in the outdoors is important for all of us, being able to get out socially and for exercise is an integral part of life. It reminds me I'm still me. If we are denied this, we are denied the right to be social, healthy, and human. Having accessible trails inspired me to roll out into a new world. When a place isn't accessible to a wheelie, we can feel cut off or like we don't belong. I'm being denied access to something that others may take for granted. Learning to problem solve made me realize nothing is impossible. I continue to learn how to accomplish things differently. 
Awareness, creativity, design, and design make the impossible accessible and aesthetic. As a community, we can learn to build differently. Imagine you're sitting in a chair and cannot get out of your house. Unable, you're unable to access a trail. You can't get to a playground your child is playing in. What do you do? For some people with physical challenges, it's just knowing the possibility to do what they need to do is available. Then they can leave the house without fear as an obstacle. Physical barriers can create mental and emotional barriers. They can cause depression, anxiety, and worse. A universally design can counteract this. Our community is not healthy if there are people that are afraid or uncomfortable to come out into it. Good physical health promotes good emotional health. Really what creating a more universal designed community is having compassion, empathy, and curiosity when we design. A place that's easy to navigate has a huge impact on deciding if you leave the house. I would love to see all populations have the ability to move and play as they wish. My accident has become a path to my awareness for the need for inclusive design. When I look around, I see there are many others than those in chairs that will benefit from this. An inclusive design of our communities will enrich us as individuals and as a whole by allowing all of the community to interact, share, and contribute. If we can make our public places simple, spacious, and easy to navigate, we will include everyone. So I hope the story of my accident helps you all understand the concept of making communities accessible for all so we can sit on the dock of the bay together. <laughs>